What's going on guys, I am the Walrus Jedi, and as you've seen in the intro, today's video will be on the Tusken Raiders and their planet of Tatooine. So if you like this video, then please consider liking and subscribing, and hitting the notification bell for more Star Wars alien species videos in the future. And you can also go down in the comments and put the next species for the next video that you would like to see. And without further ado, let's just get right to Tatooine. A vast yellow globe baking in the heat of its twin suns, Tatooine was mistaken for a star by early explorers of the Outer Rim. And in the scorching heat of high noon, locals joke that those explorers weren't so wrong. Life on Tatooine is a study in perseverance, but despite the inhospitable conditions, there is life here. Jawas, hooded rodent-like scavengers, scour Tatooine's wastes for scrap they can salvage. Primitive desert warriors called Tusken Raiders wander the desert, abiding by ancient tribal traditions. Herds of Eopes root for buried lichen. Rock warts hunt for prey, and an unlucky traveler may hear the booming cries of the semi-legendary crate dragon. And there are more recent arrivals. Humans, huts, and all manner of spacefaring species. Despite what bored young moisture farmers might tell you, Tatooine is fairly well known in the galaxy. The system sits at a juncture of hyperspace routes. The Trellis trade route connects hut space with a sizable chunk of the outer rim, while a loop of the Corellian run sees traffic running to and from the core worlds. Space battles were common over Tatooine long before the planet's settlement. And today, Tatooine's spaceports continue to thrive. Settlers have tried to make Tatooine their home numerous times, with the first recorded settlements dating to 4,200 BBY. That attempt and many others failed. Current civilization on Tatooine dates back to 700 BBY, when the Bomar monks made a home in the planet's desolation. Around 100 BBY, miners arrived. Their efforts failed, most of the few who remained became moisture farmers. Around 65 BBY, the Huts, who'd long been a presence on the planet, took over Tatooine, seeing it as a useful point for transferring smuggled goods between the Corellian Run and the Triellis. The Huts ruled the planet. In fact, if not in name, on those rare occasions when the Empire decided to assert itself, until the death of Jabba the Hutt, shortly before the Battle of Endor. Various crime lords squabbled over Tatooine for a generation after Jabba's demise, but their ambitions were scuttled when the Hutts returned after the Yuzon Vong devastated parts of Hut space. Alright, and obviously it is a desert planet, and its length of day is 23 standard hours, and its year is 304 local days. It has a 200,000 population, which is estimated. It has Jawas and Tusken Raiders for sentient species. And the breakdown of the species are humans at 70%, Jawas and Tusken Raiders both at 5% each, and then 20% of other languages. Basic, Jawa, Tusken, and Huttese. And then local councils serve as the government form for on Tatooine. It exports minerals and illegal goods, and imports foodstuffs, metals, chemicals, and technology. Tusken Raiders, also referred to as Sand People, are tall, strong, aggressive, nomadic, humanoid warriors who reside in the desert wastelands of Tatooine. From head to toe, every raider is always covered in strips of cloth-tattered robes that are belted together with dewback hide leather. They see by using tube-like shields that protect their eyes and breathe through simple filters that keep them from inhaling the sand particles that constantly swirl throughout the Tatooine air. Every piece of their attire serves to keep moisture trapped near their bodies and hygiene is only attended to in complete privacy. For seeing another individual's face, even accidentally, is cause for a blood duel. Only a Tuscan's mate is allowed to glimpse his or her face without the bandaging. Tuscan Raiders are ruthless fighters, hardened by their harsh environment to show no mercy to other species. 
They fear it little, although they can be driven away by a substantial display of force. Traveling in bands of up to twenty or thirty, they nearly always ride their bantha mounts in a straight line, journeying one behind the other to hide their numbers from enemies. Their weapon of choice is the gadurfi, or gaffy stick, which is basically a double-edged axe made of cannibalized metal scavenged from abandoned or wrecked vehicles. Some carry blaster rifles, but Tuscan blasters are not the most powerful or technologically advanced weapons. This nomadic people was the dominant sentient species on Tatooine before settlers began to colonize the world during the days of the Old Republic. The Jawas, the only other sentients on the planet, while more intelligent, were not as large or fierce as their brutal neighbors, although there is some scientific evidence that suggests the two groups may both be descended from the same species, an ancient race, known as the Kamunga. The Tuscan raiders received their galaxy-recognized name from an attack they launched on a human settlement called Fort Tuscan. While their attempt to force out the off-world settlers failed, this assault became renowned for its brutality. In response, the settlers set about to attempt their utter destruction of the Sand People, eliminating entire tribes at a time, leading to their near extinction before the few remaining tribes retreated to hide in the desert wastes. As a result of these incidents, sand people are inherently angered by the presence in their territories of off-world settlers, whom they feel encroach upon their ration of water and food. They will often attack moisture farmers and settlers without provocation, simply for the sake of intimidating those they perceive as enemies. Despite their bullying natures, Tuscan raiders will typically shy away from massive Jawa sandcrawler fortresses, heavily protected farmsteads, large cities, and even settlements, as well as from the vicious Cray dragons. It is evident that they favor situations where they have the upper hand and will only take calculated risks. Since they are a nomadic people, they maintain no permanent shelters and keep few possessions, viewing such belongings as liabilities, Regardless of their willingness to move regularly, they allow no other changes in their society or culture. Tuscan raiders fear machinery, the power of which has decimated their people in the past, and are thus thoroughly resistant to technology, stealing very little of it from hapless patrols, caravans, and moisture farmers. They feel that killing with more primitive weapons brings them the bravest of victories. To most outsiders, the language of Tuscan raiders is an unintelligible, angry combination of consonants and growls. They have no written language, so they rely on a long and complex oral tradition to keep track of their lineage and legends. Each tribe has a storyteller whose duty is to preserve and retell the group's history. The storyteller chronicles the coming-of-age tales for each member of the clan, and once he or she gives an account for the first time, not one word is permitted to change from that time forward. At some point, each storyteller will take on an apprentice and begin teaching the clan history, although the learner is not allowed to practice the history aloud, as the words must never be spoken incorrectly. If the apprentice makes a mistake, he or she is killed outright, as it is considered blasphemy. Once an apprentice has learned every tale of each lineage perfectly, he or she becomes the next storyteller, and the teacher will wander into the desert to die. Because they live such a cruel, warlike existence, the process of coming of age is very important to Tuscan raiders. Children are cared for by adult Tuscans, but they are not considered people until they have endured the actual ceremonies that bring them into maturity. Babies often perish because of the difficult desert life, and sand people take great pride in knowing that only the strongest survive. To earn the distinction of adulthood, each youth must perform a great feat of skill or prowess, the magnitude of which determines his or her station in the tribe. A solemn ritual is held to prepare Tuscan youths for their journey into the wilderness, during which they are given totems, armaments, and some water to carry with them. Saying no words and showing no fear, they mount their banthas and head off into the desert. If they return with trophies showing that they have been victorious, they are greeted with grand rejoicing. A bonfire is lit, food prepared, and... And amid great ceremony, the storyteller adds the young Tuscan's tale of bravery to the tribal history. If they do not return, no word is mentioned of them again. Sand people make no social distinction between males or females. Only clan leaders keep records on sexes. 
so that they can arrange marriages, and as soon as a youth becomes a recognized adult, he or she is assigned a mate. Through a ritual that mixes the blood of husband and wife with that of their bantha mounts, they are joined for life. In extremely rare instances, Tuscans have been known to adopt outsiders into their tribes. The Jedi, Sherad Het, lived for some time among the Tuscans, and the Jedi Tahiri Vila was raised among the Sand people after her parents died in a Tuscan raid. During the time of the New Republic, fewer Tuscan raiders were reported encroaching on human settlements, a cyclic pattern of which sandstorms threatened and destroyed many human settlements, and sociologists believe several of the tribes were affected as well. It is unclear how many Tuscan raider tribes currently reside on Tatooine, as they continue to remain resistant to outsider study. And obviously they have a notable appearance in Episode 4, A New Hope. Well, that is a bit about Tuscan Raiders and their home planet of Tatooine. So let me know if you learned anything new about this species in the comment section down below. And again, you can also, while you're down there, put in the next species you would like to see in the in this next video so don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and until next time thanks for watching